Uh, for those out there in uh, the land of Facebook, uh, if you can hear me, if you can send a message uh, and let, let us know that you are hearing me, I greatly appreciate it. Again, just checking to make sure that everybody can hear me. If you can hear me, if you'd put a comment in and let us know that uh, everything is working well, I would greatly appreciate that. Well, thank you, everybody. Well, I've got seven o'clock, so I'm going to go ahead and get, get started here. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the October edition of Facebook Live. My name is Brad Bergstrom, and I'm lucky enough to be the superintendent here for Sock Rapids Rice Public Schools. And I want to thank you for taking the time to join me here tonight uh, for this edition of Facebook Live. Uh, for those of you who are new, uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for being a part of this. I'm going to talk a little bit and a little bit here about the process and, and how this works. For those of you that have uh, joined us before, thank you for returning. Uh, I always look forward to the opportunity to share information about what's going on in the district and also to try and answer questions. The purpose of these Facebook Live uh, sessions are, are for really for two things. One, it's for me to get an opportunity to share with our community some of the things that are going on uh, that make Sock Rapids Rice such a great place to educate kids as well as to work. And the other component of this is really for me to answer any questions that you might have about the district. And how that works is that I will ask that if you have a question that you want me to try and answer, uh, go ahead and put it into the comments section. I've got somebody here tonight. Uh, Christy, thanks for being here again tonight. And also we got Corey, thank you for helping out. Uh, and uh, they will take a look at and, and, and write down the questions and then give them to me and I will try to answer them. We don't always get to every question uh, and if we don't uh, we take a look at those and see if there's some things that we can do for the next upcoming meeting and if I get asked a question and I don't know the answer sometimes I'll text some people to see if I can get a response or I will bring that question back at the next Facebook live meeting and try to answer it at that time. Uh, this is a school function and so it, as a result of that uh, we will be following the expectations that we have uh, for, for, for educational purposes. This is not an opportunity for people to put in their, their thoughts in regards to where things are at or how things are going. Uh, there is a forum for that. You can, you can e reach out to me as a superintendent and email me if you have some thoughts or concerns, uh, or you can also set up a time to meet with the board when they have their listening sessions. Uh, this is really a time for me to answer questions. And so I will ask that number one, that we be respectful of each other. Number two, uh, that we limit what's going on in the comments section to questions that people might have. And if we follow those two things, uh, we'll have a great uh, session and we'll be able to get at some of the questions that you may have, as well as to try and answer, um, uh, share some information with you in regards to things that I wanna make sure that you are aware of. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. And again, thank you for joining me tonight. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them into the comments section and they'll get them to me and I will try to answer them for you. So as we get ready to see if there's any questions, the first thing I want to talk a little bit about is as the calendar is rolled into October, uh, there are going to be some dates and in which uh, we are not going to be having school. Uh, and I want to talk a little bit about those. Uh, the first one is going to be Thursday, October 20th, as well as Friday, uh, October 21st. Uh, those are on the calendar. Those are the Education Minnesota or MEA break uh, days. And uh, also we are going to be having a staff, uh, all staff in service on Monday, November 7th. Uh, the reason why I'm talking about the Monday, November 7th one is that our next Facebook Live meeting will not be on the first Wednesday, uh, that is uh, November 2nd. We have an opportunity to recognize some of the great staff uh, in our district and, and an award ceremony uh, that will be taking place on November 2nd. And I want to make sure that I'm there uh, to support and to recognize uh, the great staff that we, that we have in the district. So we're going to need to move it to the November 9th uh, meeting or date rather than November 2nd. So that's the reason why we have an all staff in service day and there will be no school for students on that day. So to, re, to kind of recap here, it's Thursday, uh, October 20th, Friday, October 21st, 
our MBA break, and then Monday, uh, November 7th, is an all uh, staff in service, and we will not have school for students on either of those three days. Now, there is child care that is available for students in grades kindergarten through, uh, through eighth grade. Uh, please note that there is a charge uh, for this service, and families will need to register your, either your child or your children uh, if, they have, if you have not already done that. Uh, if your child is not currently registered and they need care on early release days or on days in which um, there is staff working but uh, we don't have a school for students, you can contact the Central Minnesota Boys and Girls Club uh, for K-8 students attending, uh, Mississippi Heights and Pleasant View for Kids Stop, and in the middle school it's for Storm After School, which is at the Eastside Boys and Girls Club, uh, which is, uh, is available for those full day closures that we have. If your child is going to school at Rice, you can contact Rice Kids Club uh, for students in grades K-5 through five students attending Rice. Just as a, a note, uh, that due to staffing issues, uh, we will not be having uh, Rice Kids Club uh, care uh, during on October 20th and 21st. They will instead will have the opportunity to come to Sauk Rapids through the Central Minnesota Boys and Girls Club. So again, just a gentle reminder, there is uh, a care, child care that's available on those days in which students do not have schools, do not have school, and you will need to register ahead of time if you have not already done so. Looks like I've got a couple of questions, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So the first question is, when can we sign up for middle school conferences? That's a great question. Middle school conferences are not until uh, the 25th and 27th of October. And uh, I look for information to come out in the weekly uh, family communication that comes out from the middle school. Uh, normally that's a couple of weeks ahead of time, uh, but I don't hold me to that. Uh, your best bet is to reach out to the middle school. And in the meantime, I am going to send a text to see if I can get a response uh, for that, to see if we have an idea of when that window is going to open up. So again, uh, for the middle school conferences, uh, look for that information to come from the middle school uh, in the weekly parent update. And then I will also see if I can do, uh, do a little checking here to see if I can uh, find out when there is going to be middle school conferences uh, sign up. When does that start? Thank you for your patience with this. And if the person I sent this to happens to be checking their phone, hopefully we can get a response. Um, the next question is, is, is there, are we any closer to having preschool wraparound care at Rice uh, have access to, to, uh, to access the school lunches? That's a great question. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I will certainly look into that uh, and, and see what it's at. I do know uh, that uh, with the uh, school lunch program, oftentimes there are parameters that are set in place by the federal government uh, in terms of, of how, um, who, who the food can be served to. And, and even uh, uh, the, the state weighs in on that. Uh, for example, with the price that needs to be charged for adult meals, uh, that because it is uh, federally funded, and state funded, we have to make sure that we follow their ground rules. But I will do some checking with that to see if I can get a better idea of when, uh, or what the, uh, if there's any possibility of having uh, the school lunch with uh, for the preschool students. As I uh, wait for more questions to come up, I'm going to go back to and talk a little bit more about uh, no school. Uh, just, just a gentle reminder here that when we don't have school and if you'd like your child to access the child care options that we have, uh, it is very important that you register your child or your children ahead of time. It, it's not one of those things that you could show up the day of and say, okay, yep, now I would like to have my child participate. There is a pre-registration and there will be information that will be coming out uh, in regards to um, uh, what those links look like, etc., in, in upcoming communications from the district, so please look for those. 
And uh, again, it is fee-based, it is not free. Uh, we had a, a time period where these kinds of services were at no charge, uh, but that has, that's no longer the case, and so there is a fee. And the part of the reason why we have to pre-register is there's a capacity limit and also for staffing of those. So that is why uh, it is highly unlikely that you will be able to show up the day of and say, I'd like to have my child participate with that in those programs. So uh, again, a reminder that you must pre-register. Uh, it is fee-based and uh, registration acceptance is based on program capacity. So if you have any interest, the sooner the better uh, is what I would advise. Uh, speaking of school and some things going on there, uh, it is a so calendar rolls to October. The other thing that starts to happen is we start to have parent-teacher conferences. And uh, so those will start uh, at the high school. Uh, we'll start that first on October 12th, and then the second night will be, uh, second time will be on the 17th. Uh, there will be options available uh, for some schools or for, for uh, for virtual conferences. Some schools it will be a specific time period, other schools it will be on a specific day, uh, but there will be the option for virtual conferences is, if that uh, works out better for families. So please make sure that you look for that. And also, uh, as mentioned in one of the earlier questions, uh, there, we ask that families sign up uh, and, and uh, that information will be coming out later as well. So the high school, the 12th and the 17th, for our middle schools, we'll be doing, or excuse me, for elementary schools, we'll be doing those on the 13th and the 18th of October. Uh, those will be the two nights. And then for the middle school, uh, after we get back from MEA break, uh, we'll be doing those on the 25th and the 27th of October. So again, conferences, uh, high school will be, uh, for the high school will be on the 12th and 17th of October. For the middle school will be on the 13th and the 18th of October. And then for the middle school, it will be on the 25th and the 27th. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your child's school and they can certainly answer any of those questions for you. Uh, I'm not seeing any more questions at this time, so I'm going to keep uh, rolling through some of the information that I wanted to make sure that I shared. Uh, you know, one of the things that is, uh, as, as we ease uh, through, as we've eased through the pandemic and things are, are, are looking better in terms of, of not having to worry about, uh, about that as much, uh, one of the things that I think is really important is the, is the music concerts. And I want to make everybody be aware that the high school choir uh, under the direction of Mr. Stephen Mick will have their first concert this year. That will be on October 17th, uh, and that will be at 8 p.m., and that will be at the Performing Arts Center uh, here at the high school. So again, the first concert of the year with the high school choir will be with the high school choir here at the high school October 17th, starting at 8 o'clock, and it will be in the Performing Arts Center. So we'll be looking forward uh, to hearing the musical talents of our students under the direction of Mr. Stephen so uh, again, October 17th, high school choir concert. Uh, the next item I'll talk a little bit about here has to do with, uh, with our tennis courts. Uh, I've talked a little, I talked a little bit about it in our last uh, Facebook Live session and we've opened up uh, our tennis courts and we were scheduled to open them up on the 19th of September and we were able to meet that deadline. Uh, later that same week, we had our first home tennis meet with the girls. Uh, team and it was also senior night and it was a beautiful evening and the facility is wonderful and I'll add as a tangent to that that uh, this is also a community asset. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, when, when the school is not using them uh, that the members of the community know that they can utilize this space as well and uh, we're very proud and excited to have the tennis courts uh, here at the high school uh, as a school superintendent. It was very nerve-wracking for me to know that our kids were going across Highway 15 uh, two different times a day, most of the time at times where traffic was a little bit heavier. And now we are able to, to host our own meets and for our uh, coaches to have practices with their students here at the high school, and that is a tremendous uh, asset for us. Uh, we hosted a playoff meet uh, uh, yesterday uh, here at um, here at the high school. So not only do we have our home tennis courts now, but we're able to host a playoff uh, a match. And uh, the girls were victorious, they defeated Big Lake. And so congratulations to uh, uh, Coach uh, Trisha Bemboom and her other coaches and the team on, uh, on a successful 
victory uh, in the tennis meet that was held yesterday, and best of luck as they continue their team play through the tennis uh, tournament. So again, uh, again, congratulations to the coaches and to the players for being victorious over Big Lake uh, in our you know, tennis uh, playoff meet that we hosted here, which uh, was available because we've got the tennis court. So great for that to be happening. Um, not, again, not seeing any questions. So the next item I have for you is, you know, we, we've got a, a lot of, of our staff who put in a lot of time to make sure that the needs of our students, as well as, uh, as the staff that work here, their needs are being met. And, and one of those uh, special groups is our custodial group. And this past Sunday was National Custodial Appreciation Day. And I would just like to give a shout out and, uh, and a one clap for our custodians for the great work that they do. Uh, this, the, the, our facilities uh, are in amazing shape because of the extra care that they take to make sure the little things are done well. And the other piece is, is that they, they, they make sure that our kids and our staff are taken care of and their needs are met as well. So uh, again, a, a special thank you uh, as part of National Custodial Appreciation Day. And thanks to all of you who are part of our custodial group and the great work that you do to keep our buildings in beautiful uh, shape as well as to make sure that the needs of staff and students are being met on a daily, sometimes hourly basis. So thank you for all your work on that. Uh, the next item that I have is we had open house for the new uh, Pleasant View School. Uh, it was the Saturday the 24th. I'm looking to make sure I have the date right with that. Uh, we estimated that there was over 500 people that came through and had a chance to view the facility. Thank you for those of you who took the time on uh, Saturday afternoon to come. I also want to extend a special thanks to, to those who spoke uh, at, uh, at, uh, at the beginning of the, of the grand opening for, uh, for the new school. Uh, that would include our board chair, Ryan Bukowski. It would also include uh, Principal Abby uh, Froyland. It would also include our mayor, Mr. Kurt Hunsinger, and then also Dave Bergeron from ICS. Thank you for coming and sharing so, uh, uh, a few words with, uh, with the community. Uh, the building is absolutely amazing. What makes it amazing is the staff and the students that come there and work hard every day, uh, but the facility is absolutely gorgeous. And we're very proud of that and also very thankful to our community for the support uh, to put that new structure into place. We've still got a few uh, punch list items that, we're, that we'll be wrapping up and getting fixed, uh, which is not unusual, but we've been in the building since the very first day and, uh, and what a beautiful uh, building it is. So just a, a special thanks to all involved in making this happen. And, and part of the reason I bring this up is, is one of the questions that I got there, as well as I've had a couple of since then, is on the west side of the, of the building, which is where four and, a half, uh, four and a Half Street is at, there is a sidewalk that kind of comes out of more of the northern half of the building, and, and, and it kind of comes out and makes an S pattern, and it stops in the middle of the grass. And I've had some people that have asked, so, so, so where's the sidewalk going? And, and, and I want to make sure that people understand what that sidewalk is for. So uh, we have students who sometimes uh, have a need uh, because of a variety of different reasons uh, that they may need to uh, take a, a, a sensory break. And so what we will do is, is it's a sidewalk that the students can walk on and when they get to the end of it, they turn around and they come back. And we did not want to have that sidewalk connect with another sidewalk that might lead them farther away from the building. And whether it is a student that has the capacity to do that on their own, to walk that, uh, that sidewalk and stop and turn around and come back, or it's with adult supervision. Uh, the, the design behind this is just to give students that sensory break that they might need. And uh, it, it's not a sidewalk that goes nowhere, but it's really designed purposefully to let students get that break and then turn around and have them come back. And so it, it, was, uh, it was a very purposeful design. One of the many things that were done within that building with a very specific purpose in mind. And uh, a lot, a, a number, not a lot, some of those are to, were designed to help some of our students who, who have uh, uh, needs that, uh, that, 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 that to help them be successful they need to be met. Uh, we have things like rooms where we can adjust the color of the light to, to make sure that it's a more calming effect, which has a profound impact 
on, on some of our students and helping them when the, when they are over uh, sensitized and, and they and they're overstimulated, I should say. So again, that sidewalk has been a question that I've been asked about a couple of different times, and I thought that I would uh, make sure that I explain that is that it's really designed for our students who are in need of that sensory break and. and we didn't want it to connect to any other sidewalks, and they walk that path, and then they turn around and come back. And uh, even early on in the year, uh, it has proven to be very uh, successful, very helpful for our students, which is, in the end, what this is all about. Okay. Um, well, I have uh, a couple of more items that I'll talk about, and if we don't have uh, any other questions, uh, then I'll look to go ahead and uh, and, and uh, call this uh, meeting to an end. But a couple of things that I want to talk about, I mentioned a little earlier, uh, the next uh, meeting that we will have will be on uh, Wednesday, November 9th. Uh, normally it would be, it's always the first Wednesday of the month, but because of the recognition for our staff uh, ceremony uh, that is uh, sponsored by Resource Trainings and Solutions, I want to be there uh, to honor those staff members. And so uh, that is happening on November 2nd uh, and at, the, at about the same time. And so as a result of that, we'll be bumping the November uh, uh, Facebook Live meeting to the 9th and still the same time at seven o'clock, but we'll bump it to uh, the 9th. And then the last item that I have for you is really around the idea of uh, we still have openings uh, for positions in our districts in our district uh, there are these uh, work days are Monday through Friday uh, summers uh, can be off and then school breaks uh, are, are, are off and some of the positions that we're looking for include uh, cashiers uh, some paraprofessional positions uh, we're looking for some custodial support as well uh, building attendant uh, we're looking for child care uh, for pre-k through grade five uh, we're also always looking for coaches and then um, again, uh, substitute teachers, you need a four-year degree, but it does not have to be a degree in education. And, and, and what makes a, an organization such as ISD 47 a great place? It's because of the people. And uh, I may be a little biased in my opinion, but I think we've got an amazing people who do amazing work every single day to meet the needs of their colleagues as well as to meet the needs of our students and our families. <clears throat> and it is a great place to work. And so if you are interested in, uh, in, in potentially working in the district, please reach out to our HR office and we will certainly answer any questions that you have and even uh, go so far as if you need some help in filling out the application and what that process looks like, we can guide you through that as well. So again, we're looking for cashiers, we're looking for paraprofessionals, we're looking for custodial help, a building attendant, child care for grades um, pre-K through five, uh, looking for some coaches uh, for in the winter, uh, and beyond, and then also uh, the need for substitute teachers. And again, as a substitute teacher, you, do, you need a four-year degree to get the license, uh, but it does not need, it does not have to be a degree in education. It can be any four-year degree. And again, we can certainly help you through that process because it's not a, uh, it, it's not complicated, but it's not easy. Uh, with uh, with that piece for the substitute uh, substitute teaching, but we will help you and guide you through that process. Um, at this point, uh, it looks like we have a a, a wrap on questions, uh, and I have shared the information that I wanted to share with you. Again, I want to thank you for coming tonight and spending, as it looks here, about 25 minutes with me. I did not get an answer uh, in regards to the middle school and signing up for conferences. So I, uh, I would really encourage you to reach out to the school and also to be looking for information to be coming from them because it's one of those things that by the time we get to our next meeting, uh, conferences will already have been held. So with that, thank you very much everybody for being here tonight. Have a great evening, take care, and go Storm.